My name is Barry Schnoor. I'm the CEO of David Schnoor Associates. Mark Sorensen is the Chief Technical Officer of M3 Precision. Mark's a master machinist and an entrepreneur. Mark, I wanted to, to talk specifically about, about Swiss machining and um, lots of times, lots of terms that people um, use, a number of axes, the spindle size, um, are all Swiss screw machining centers capable of producing similar parts or is the place to start? Um, what type of equipment do you have when folks are considering where to take something? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things uh, to consider when uh, sourcing uh, CNC Swiss components. Um, the complexity uh, with the part is um, parallels the axis of the machine of uh, the more complex the component, uh, the more axis are required to make the part. Uh, our axis capability goes up to eight axis, which allows us to have three simultaneous axis in the cut. Um, and that allows us to do things like uh, helical patterns on a cylinder uh, or um, Hex patterns, um, lobular patterns. Um, we try to uh, work with our customers initially to make um, the components fit on the capabilities that we have. Um, the other big thing to consider, which is universal to all um, parts in terms of complexity, is the ability to hold the part once it's machined. In other words, to pick the part off, uh, whether we're doing um, work on the sub spindle, the pick off spindle, or just picking it off and ejecting the part, uh, the shape of the part, um, we need to integrate some type of shape that is able to be colleted or picked off. Um, and that's regardless of the complexity of the part. Interesting. I think it's a great lead into to the next question I had for you. I mean, one of the difficulties in designing machined components is that many engineers have either not done the actual machining themselves and had that experience on Swiss machines. Um, CAD allows complex geometries to be modeled with relative ease. Basically, you can design anything, but manufacturing some of those designs can be challenging, if not impossible. I think on the other hand, right, the capabilities of some of your newer machines go way beyond what people may be familiar with in earlier generations of Swiss machines. Can you talk about how you work with customers to ensure that they're both creating designs that can be machined while also making sure that they know about how complex they could actually get? Right. Um, yeah, I, I mean, ideally, we're involved at that initial uh, DFM level and can uh, contribute to the engineer's understanding of how our machines work. And when we get to that level, um, it really benefits uh, the DFM process. Uh, things like uh, features, and this is in the range of size, uh, we uh, produce parts from um, a half a millimeter to 32 millimeters in size and with features down to um, 6,000 uh, in that range. Um, it's good to understand how those features are produced by understanding uh, the way the machines function. And, and sometimes we've um, actually sent uh, our customers' videos so they can have a better understanding of what a multi-axis Swiss does. It helps them design the part accordingly. Uh, things that we like to talk about um, when we're involved at that level in the early stages, um, number one is material. Um, if we can have input on material, we like to steer customers to materials that are more machinable. Um, and that's always a cost driver, particularly when things scale up. Uh, and another big factor is uh, features that intersect. We see a lot of um, small components that have intersecting 
features of a, a threaded hole into a slot per se. And uh, anytime we have features like that, we create sharp corners that are an issue. And uh, uh, particularly on small parts, uh, those type of features are difficult to deburr. And if it's a, a challenging material to machine, that becomes even more difficult. So uh, those typically are the kind of things, we, if we can, we like to have input on early to help uh, design in a, a feature that is more uh, cost effective to, to process. Um, and the, the third component of that, go ahead. No, please. And the third component is the uh, aspect of the part that we need to be able to pick off um, to be able to hold the part in the subspindle. Again, whether it's to work on the backside of the part or just to pick it off. We uh, don't necessarily need to pick off on a round diameter. We can pick off on uh, squares or rectangles or odd shapes. Uh, it just requires a custom, uh, typically EDM uh, pickoff, call it. But we need uh, some feature that is integrated in the part that we can actually grab and call it the part uh, to pick it off with. Very good, thank you. And you know, I think the accessibility of, of you and your team, Mark, to to help make those things is 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 really critical. Um, finally, you know, there, there are some parts here that inform this, but you know, you talked about that material choice. Many of us think of metals when we're thinking about machining a part, but you have extensive experience in machining medical approved polymers as well. Are there advantages of machining over injection molding of polymers? And, and I know obviously there are differences as well. There, there are specific grades of plastics that can be machined and others that are really good and others that are really bad. Um, you want to weigh in right. on that? Yeah, I, we've had exposure to a, a, an array of uh, plastic machining parts um, from the simple ABS, um, nylons and Delrens up to the uh, Peaks and uh, Teflons and Kynars. Um, it, we've been involved with some projects that uh, were, uh, we thought we were prototyping and just helping get a design lock for the customer and five or eight years later we're still machining the parts um, either because they've evolved the design and don't want to lock in on the cost of a mold or it's just been cost effective enough that it scaled up in volume for us to produce some um, a screw machine. The uh, other areas that we've uh, been able to uh, continue with production beyond prototype levels uh, are with some plastics. Uh, we've done a uh, Kynar part for about 15 years um, for an aerospace project um, that I guess that material just doesn't, it's very tough to mold. Um, it, it, I, I think at temperature it gases and corrodes everything. Um, so there's applications that um, just because of the difficulties with molding uh, and um, our cost effectiveness. I think we've had some success at uh, surprising our customers with um, our, our price point, at, at particularly in volume, uh, with competing with uh, a molded part. Um, and saving, uh, giving them the ability to change a part and, and not have that initial large investment in molded tooling. It, it has to be the right part uh, and the right fit, but there's definitely uh, quite a few applications. We're, we've got some 15-year ongoing uh, medical plastic parts that we, we thought we'd be gone, would have been gone many years ago, and we continue machining them. Great. Mark, thanks so much. Please do follow up with us on anything specific. Again, you can either get a hold of us through the DSA website and just send us uh, questions with what you need.